in any construction drawing set or architectural presentation, you probably are going to have what's called a section drawing. I posted a picture of my section perspective on my Instagram. So today I really want to slow it down and break down the necessary steps that I personally took to make a section perspective drawing. For a section, you literally cut through the entire building, almost like you're slicing a cake and the layers that you see, like layers of icing would be your floor place. That's always how I like to think about it. And today I'm just gonna slow it down, break it down into easy digestible steps. And before you know it, you will be drawing sections like a pro. I would say there's about nine steps for any section drawing. And my typical workflow is using Rhino first to model everything, exporting all of my line work in Illustrator and stylizing it later in Photoshop. In architecture school, you are probably producing so many complex buildings and design proposals. So it is so important to have a nice legible section cut to show alongside your architecture presentations. Hey guys, it is your girl Nat here. If you are new here, my name is Natalie. I am the creator behind Unraveling Architecture. And without further ado, we'll just hop right into it. Generally speaking, a section will show you the varying floor thicknesses, the relationship between floor slabs to one another, the interstitial spaces created between floor plates, varying height conditions, window placement, circulation details like elevators, stairs, how people circulate throughout a building, framing details, all that good stuff. So it is really good and important that you draw a really good section. Now granted, if you are in the professional world, you will be drawing a lot more construction-based details and multiple, multiple section cuts, slicing through construction details so that your contractor fully understands the building and how it's put together. But in architecture school, chances are you are only going to be drawing one section, two section, three sections max, just whatever your professor asked for you to produce for final review. So there are about nine steps to drawing a section perspective. The first and most important part is taking your section cut. Without a doubt, determining where you are taking your section is going to be the most critical step to any section drawing because it determines what is shown, what is hidden, and the relationship of floor plates and interstitial spaces like I talked about. So here's my model, super organic, super flowy, right? And if you are curious about how I conceived this model, I have a bunch of all-nighter videos actually on my channel where I was working through the form for this. I recommend using what's called a clipping plane. And in Rhino, you just type in the command, clip plane and just move through your model. Your model should be complete furniture, people, the people are hidden right now, but furniture, people, stairs are modeled, circulations all figured out. The section cut should be the final thing. Now, obviously everything doesn't have to be perfect. You can always go back and adjust everything because you are producing ultimately a 2D drawing. So once I find something I like, I duplicate the edge of my clipping plane and I extrude it so it is now a plane. Number two, split your rhino geometry. So splitting your section is probably the most annoying part of it all. It's gonna take some time and also please keep in mind I'm not paying super close attention to how I'm splitting this. You have to pay much better attention to the details than I'm doing right now. I'm just going through it really quickly uh, just for demonstration purposes. So now that <laughs> that disclaimer is out of the way. Okay, so first you select all of your geometry except for the plane, type in the command split and then select your plane. What's gonna happen is, is that Rhino's gonna work its magic and all of your surfaces, poly surfaces, grouped objects, it's all gonna be split. Now, a comment about grouped objects when you go through and delete the part of your section that you aren't showing, those grouped objects will also delete as a result. So just be cognizant of that and also, Maybe it would be smart for you to just hide your objects instead of deleting them and then just delete them later once you figure everything out. This part is critical. This is probably the fastest workflow that you can follow. Number three, use the section command in Rhino. 
So what do I mean by the section command? I found this hack way too late in my architecture career. Basically what you do is you select all of your geometry and draw the line for where Rhino will hypothetically draw a cut line through everything. So that means if you have a box there, a rectangle will appear where you have stairs, where you have people, it doesn't matter what it is. A line is going to be cut through and shown to you. Now this cut line will be your guide for everything resulting after. The other thing I do during this process is actually contour my form. Now my form is super organic. If you have a more orthogonal geometry, you don't need to do this, but I will say this, it is much easier for you to draw out all of your line work, all of the hatches, all of the complex geometries in Rhino. You don't want to be in Adobe Illustrator drawing lines. I will say that again. You don't want to go into Illustrator with intention of using the pen tool to draw out all of your lines. It is much easier and less of a headache drawing all of your line work in Rhino. I went over hatches in my how to draw a floor plan video, but here's a quick overview. You draw a bounding box and you just type in the hatch command. Now, Rhino basic hatches, they don't include a brick texture and this wall was all brick. So you can just Google, you know, free Rhino hatches online. There's a bunch out there. Once your hatches are complete and the command is over, I recommend exploding all of your line work and grouping them. This is important because if you don't do this step, then your line work actually isn't exported to Adobe Illustrator. Number four, make 2D the backside and under layer parts of your Rhino model for further detail. This is probably pretty self-explanatory, but in section drawings, there's a bunch of information behind the cut line. So you make 2D and the next step is definitely the best step. Number five and probably the most tedious step is cleaning up all of your line work. That's right. Cleaning up line work is definitely the most tedious step. I hate this process myself and it can take a couple of hours. I'm not even exaggerating. So any overlapping lines you need to clean up using trim commands and Rhino. So put on a favorite movie of yours or binge watch a show because trust me, you're going to be here for a while. But I must say it is paramount that all of your stuff is separated on individual layers. Here you can see my entourage is separated, but I didn't cut out the hatchwork behind it, but that's okay because in Illustrator, I could just make all my entourage have a white fill. My hat works on a different layer, my contours on a different layer, my cut lines on a different layer. This is absolutely essential because how you draw stuff in Rhino and how clean and organized you are will make the transition from Rhino to Adobe Illustrator much simpler and easier. Number six is to add details after your line work is all cleaned up. Consider adding title blocks, call out dimensions, entourage completely up to you. Number seven, export it to Adobe Illustrator. Number eight, clean up your line weights. <laughs> it is crucial and critical to have really clean line weights so people reading your section perspective drawing can actually understand what's going on. So various line weights and a good contrast between your line weights allow viewers to properly read your drawing. So your thickest line weight always is going to be that cut line. And if you remember from the Rhino part, our cut line was generated from that section command we used in Rhino. And all of the details in the back which really elevate the quality of your drawing, like this brick transition, the hatch, even the glass details in the window panes really elevates your drawing and they don't have to be as dark, right? And same thing with contours. Because contour lines have so many layers to them, it will give it its own pattern and it's super unique to your form. The way I work, I first start with my cut line and go backwards. I'm unsure about what thickness, what point size thickness to make a detail in Rhino. I'll say lighter line weights is typically better because I don't want to distract the viewer from the overall goal of the drawing. An optional step, but number nine is to stylize your drawing in Photoshop. Now there is nothing wrong with a simple illustrator only kind of section, 
but here you can see in Photoshop, I didn't even really touch the line work. What I did do is I added a background, added a sun, added the birds. I understand in the architecture community, the minute you introduce birds into a render, it's automatically assumed to be a bad render. I don't know why this is the case. I don't think it looks that bad. I don't know. <laughs> Please feel free to disagree with me. But you can see I added a background render of the existing building these background images just to help lend this section perspective drawing with my other existing renders so my board looks very cohesive there are a bunch of styles that you can copy or follow a good resource that is free for you to use is just reference pinterest i feel like students Architecture students live on Pinterest. No shame in it. Overall, a section drawing really reveals such intimate relationships of spaces between one another. And you really want to capitalize on this relationship and how important it is actually to show this relationship of spaces in your section drawing. So that is why it is so important to pick a perfect place to do a section cut. Well, that is it for today's video. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. And if you want more tutorials like this on my channel, just let me know. I'm here to help you guys out. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Love you guys.